my projects and so on maybe someone would like to ask something when i when i share my projects my main goal while sharing my projects is mainly um about what is done and how it is done so i can just mention this is made using rhino this is made using grassover and this is made using tsv line and this is made using 3d max and so on so the students can understand what can be done and using what so they can uh, visually uh, understand uh, the software um, and the outcomes from each one and then the third presentation or the third subject will be digital fabrication again and um, we'll be looking uh, into some projects and uh, the steel structures um, paneling and so on uh, and then we'll take a coffee break and we'll come back to start uh, just a very small experimentation on rhino and tomorrow we'll totally be uh, working on the software and so on uh, okay let's start sharing my screen my entire screen we have nothing to fear <laughs> okay uh, and now in my uh, let's go in my graduation project okay i'll share my as i told um, i'll share my portfolio later few minutes but now i'll start uh, sharing some physical experimentation regarding my graduation project you know um in, in in the in the university i was looking for doing something uh, computationally designed I was honored and fortunate. Um, in 2008, I went for engineering consultants group, the same company I'm working for now. I went for them, but at that time, I was doing an internship. And fortunate, my good luck, the Hadid was designing a building plan to be constructed in Egypt. Um, and I was lucky to get involved in this project. I, I got involved as an internship, but I get involved in the Hadid project. <laughs> and uh, I learned from them some, some tools. And this is why I started using Rhino very early. Uh, I started using Rhino in 2008, and we are to 2021 now. It's around 13 years using Rhino and TSP lines. And then Grasshopper, when they invented Grasshopper, I started using Ryan actually before they invented Grasshopper. Okay. And what I'm sharing now is how I was thinking and looking for uh, designing the form. Um, as I mentioned, this is a very simple experimentation, you know, because it's totally from a student perspective. It is not just me now. It is me 10 years ago. It is from a student perspective and it's very simple experimentation. Firstly, I started looking for uh, the form itself. I bring some plasticine, the very, uh, looks like a clay material, white clay material, plasticine in Arabic, it's a salt. And then started just, just looking for some forms. I was designing a, a museum. Um, and then I take comments on this very, very basic experimentation with the material and then take it further, looking what, what, what kind of form I can have. This is an approach for a design, um, but there is other approaches, you know. Now I'm just learning from the material itself, but not to use the same material for the design, but I'm trying to get inspired from the material into the design process. So it's like experimentation, looking for the masses and concepts and so on, but while thinking how the museum can be. And then like for an upgrade, um, I started just ma making the whole surrounding in cardboard and thinking and looking for the masses of the project and how it will look like uh, and how you will see it from very different perspectives from the urban tissue and from the surrounding buildings around the site and so on. Studying the heights, 
um, the curvatures, the levels, um, and so on, just very basic and conceptual ideas. And then I stopped. I selected one of these ideas based on the visual connectivity and uh, human experience. So in, in this very small experimentation, what I learned is I experimented the material just to get inspired. But in other aspects, like well, like the ones I mentioned earlier, um, were them just a minute? Yeah, the one I mentioned earlier. Yeah, I sent it to you in the chat. Uh, the one we we had done in the American verse in Cal. The students just do the experimentation. I stop sharing just for a minute. Okay, and then we'll go for yes. So the students just start thinking of the material, do a physical experimentation, and then there is two, let's say, two uh, uh, possible uh, track to move on. The first one is to get inspired from the physical experimentation itself. And the second one is to get inspired and learn from the physical capabilities of the material and then use these physical capabilities furthermore into a design proposal. And we can see this in Hana Dahi. Let's go for Hana Dahi uh, proposal. Just a minute. I'll share again the screen. I'm getting familiar now with Google Meet. It's very friendly interface. Okay. Uh, so when we mention Hana Dahi, and then we go for research, and into research, we can search for funded projects or publications. In funded projects, let's say building materials, here you will see building materials like insect, exoskeleton. And now they are looking for inspiration. They are not just looking for inspiration, but also looking for, for a structural behavior. It's, it's more into material intelligence, material behavior, and structural behavior. So, they are studying the material and experimenting its capabilities and looking, looking forward how they can learn from its physical uh, uh, characteristics and take it forward into a, a material building component. So it will become like a, a material block or something like this, or it can be like the structure element or a working structure or whatever. You can check later the website for more information about uh, this kind of projects and so on. And for this one, we remember what Akimink had done. We remember the, uh, the, the wired, the tensile wired and so on. And this is how they experimented the material, how they tested the materials, you know. Um, from my physical experience, because I, I was there, not in Germany, but I, I, I had a physical touch and physical experience with the same pavilion in Shanghai. Um, it is like if you, are, if you had a wire, it can be like any kind of wire, by wire. And then this wire, you can dip it inside epoxy. You can fill this wire into epoxy and mix it well with epoxy. And then take this wire and do formation well. And after a few minutes, when the epoxy solidify, you will have a final surface or form generated using a bio wire, but with some chemicals like epoxy. This is why I expect from these kind of designs, but you can check more details on the website about how and what and when. And furthermore, furthermore, you can find you know more details, more ideas uh, about how they got inspired, not just inspired, but also used the material characteristics and implemented into a design how they can learn from its characteristics and take it further. If we remember Suminham and her pavilion and how she tweaked the, the, the structural element, the wooden structural element into her marvelous design, 
This is how she experimented physically the material and know well, studied well its physical capabilities and then take these physical capabilities and experimentation furthermore into a real time project, real life project. And this one, they studied uh, the material, the biomaterial, and then how they can make a composite based on these biomaterials and use this style as a building component. And they may have, you know, a very excellent outcomes from these kind of projects. And there is a lot of professors around the world working on the same idea. So it's, it's more into, you, you will explore the physical capabilities of the material and you may get inspired for a form finding technique and you may inspired by its physical capabilities and limits and take this furthermore into designing by a structural element. And designing by a structural element is a well-known concept. You can just go for Google and write designing by a structural element. Structural. Yes. You have a question? Just I remember, you know, I remember the Gothic architectures and how the flying buttresses and so on uh, was totally a, a structural component and how they used this kind, you know, Gothic architectures. Yes and how they use the flying buttresses, these ones and these ones, it is a structural system and the whole architectural style is totally inspired by a structural systems and how these can hold the, the building together and so on. And if we look into other structural, it, it, we can say architectural form or from my point, I prefer structural form. This is totally, totally a structural form. And this is as well totally a structural form. Okay, so now these people, uh, or let's say the the crafts um, or the masonry people or whatever, uh, or the master builder. I prefer master builder. The ma this master builder started experimenting and exploring the stone. And then they started experimenting the stone capabilities. And then they started taking the stone capabilities furthermore into a structural element that can be implemented together into an architectural form. So this architectural form is totally inspired and driven by an, by an structural element. Okay, this is the first point to discuss. The second point I'm going to discuss some of my projects and well uh, as i mentioned earlier just tell you this is done by rhino this is done by grass Uber, this is done by three max this is done by whatever so you can uh, visually understand uh, identify recognize as you would like to mention but just you can when you look at a project when you look in your mind for an idea you can decide and take a decision what software I prefer to do it. So my my point here is that it is I'm not I'm it is not preferred to use one software for everything. If if I am designing a building, I would like to say that I'll start working with plasticine. I'll start doing some uh, uh, material experimentation with plasticine. And then I, I'll take this forward, I, I'll take photos. Or I can use, you know, Q, uh, Q clone. It is an app on your phone. You can do 3D scanning for the plasticine model, the mock-up model, the small model by clay, plasticine, or any material you would like. You can take photos or you can do 3D scanning. And then you will take this forward into Rhino. And after that, you can work on Rhino on taking this very simple idea into a design. And after that, you can use a real-time link to connect Rhino through Grasshopper into Revit. And then you can go for Revit 
to continue building modeling and uh, prepare a BIM model, uh, you can go for Revit or you can go for uh, ArchiCAD. You can use Rhino BIM or whatever you want. But the point is you started like experimenting physically and then you take photos or you, you, you have done 3D scanning and then you take these photos and 3D scanning furthermore into Rhino. Uh, uh, cleaning the surface, working on developing that surface, and then you take the surface furthermore into Revit or ArchiCAD and so on, uh, uh, continue on building the details and all what you need for constructing this project. And maybe you implement, let's say, Lumion into Rhino. Working with Rhino nowadays, you will do a direct link with Lumion. So you can have Lumion engine into your Rhino viewboard. So you can implement L Lumion with Rhino and implement Revit or ArchiCAD with Rhino and so on. So you can have a final outcomes. From my point of perspective, I prefer and I would like to recommend you all to just not to, to stick to one software, just learn how to do interdisciplinary and go for a lot of softwares just for you know the the optimum track the the fastest one the best one to do it and this can be done by you know cooperation and collaboration between the programs okay and now when we go to the portfolio portfolio yeah again if someone just missed my qr codes or my email or my phone number and you can have all these from chandra he had all my connections this is a project i had uh, with the hadid I, I wasn't working in the hadid i was working within the egyptian consultant engineering consultant group in cairo okay and then moving forward about my grad and what I had done, we discussed the, the, how I learned from exploring physically the material. But now I'm sharing with you some physical uh, uh, and digital glimpses. If we look here, this is totally designed on Rhino and rendered as well on Rhino in 2012. This is totally rendered on Rhino with some Photoshop like the sky is the sky is just photoshop but everything else is just rhino and your own imagination this is totally done by rhino this is totally done by rhino and this as well but this one is done by tsp line and we'll discuss further the tsp line idea and in 2012 i was using tsp lines but nowadays there is rhino 7 which has a, a, um, an engine called SubD. SubD is a command based in Rhino 7, and SubD is as a TSP line, because TSP line is no longer available. It was a plugin in Maya and Winza Hadid, from my point of perspective, I think that it was a plugin in Maya and Winza Hadid started using Rhino. They developed this TSP line into Rhino, and when she passed away, she stopped developing TSP line for Rhino. It's an autodesk way of making money. <laughs> okay. This is totally developed using TSP lines. This, this very smooth curves and so on. This is all my doing, my work. 2D drawing on Rhino, because Rhino is a CAD CAM system. So working with Rhino will help you to do um, what you would like. Like we can have layers. You can change the layer color, you can change the layer material, and so on. And if it is lines, you can change the line type, border center, and so on. It's a CAD CAM system. It's totally as if you are using AutoCAD, but it's an AutoCAD from the future. It is not the AutoCAD. And you can have a lot of, there is a lot of uh, commands and components where you can use to study your own designs and models and so on. I'll share with you later on a few minutes some um, of the projects uh, i had a rhino but after we finish the one on in the presentation these lines can totally be done if i zoomed in 
these lines is totally done this one the organic ones tsp line and this one is rhino so when we look for and we see some very smooth lines and connections it's sub d or tsp line but if it is sharp edge and so on it is rhino okay it's totally you know you can do whatever you want Rhino engine is very helpful and very friendly as well. I'm totally recommending Rhino. And if you had a student email uh, connected to an educational institution and would like to buy Rhino, you will get a great discount. You can buy Rhino like for very, um, I don't remember how much I paid, but it's it's nothing. You know? um, and there is, is a smooth connections, organic connection. These organic connections can be done using uh, sub D or TSP lines. These organic connections, some studies from the internet. This was my project in the third year on the school of architecture. Third year, third year, this means 2010, 2011. Okay, and then we'll go for our physical experimentation at the American University in Cairo. We had a lot of physical experimentation which learned me how to think, how to look, how to feel the material while designing and fabricating and so on. Um, we had um, in the university three printers and, and CNC's, plastic printers, ceramic printers and so on. This is my professor. Professor Sharif Murad, and this is my second professor, Professor Basant Masoud, and this is me while working in the lab, experimenting the material, and all of these are my students, looking, um, getting excited, and feeling uh, the material behavior, and so on. You know, I used to say that digital fabrication, it is not a job, it is a passion, it is a life. So we had, as I mentioned, CNC's, laser cutters, 3 printers, and so on. And this is a kind of our outcomes. And this is what I can do, what I had done, and what we will do in our, it, maybe not this workshop, we don't have enough time, but the next one we'll do as well. Uh, how to design an advanced structure. This is our work at the American University of Cairo. It just not, it not, it is not just me. We are a teamwork. We, we are a teamwork full of, uh, I had uh, colleagues working with me and so on. Uh, we can do this kind of advanced studies, advanced structures for futurist, futuristic forms and so on. And then we will learn how to do uh, optimization for the supports to do the three printing. What, if you would like to do an advanced structure like this one, you will need to optimize the supports so you can use a plastic printer and maybe learning how to optimize the supports for a plastic printer help you when you when, when one day the 3d metal printing become available for everyone so you can optimize your own supports at that time and other physical experimentation experimenting and printing a ceramic uh, models um thanks for tarabishi he done this three printing. He was my colleague at this time, but nowadays he is working in Foster Partners. And then how you can design using a material. And this is a good example. When you would like to do a design using a material, you can experiment the material, know its physical characteristics and limitations, and then do mock-ups, small mock-ups, and then take it further. These cylinders cut it using a CNC, it's a plastic cylinder, cut it using a CNC and uh, export it from Grasshopper with the tagging, automated tagging system and so on, and then uh, assemble together, um, stack together and so on. And actually this one was my student at that time, nowadays he's my colleague. This is, you know, very inspiring. To, to see your students become colleagues and so on. I hope one day, you know, we can meet after these situations of COVID-19 and so on. Maybe I visit India and I can see you all and have a, a coffee break together. This is other example. 
on how you can have an architectural element, an outcome and design inspired by a material behavior. Firstly, we experimented a, a lot uh, using epoxies, polyesters, and so on. It is a kind of a formwork. You had a mold, a rubber mold, and then this rubber mold engraved using a CNC, and then we bore uh, the epoxy or polyester inside the engraved uh, rubber, and then we build it off. So we have these very beautiful outcomes. But yes, it's not beautiful. I see it. There is some black rubber, you know, stagged, attached, um, melted onto the panels and so on, because it's just an experimentation. And here I, I had a mistake, you know, while experimenting on a very small prototype, I didn't consider the heat uh, factor while enlarging this small tile, you know. We were in exp experimenting on 20 per 20 centimeters uh, material tile, and then it is two meters per two meters like uh, a panel, as you can see. So it becomes so hot. So it melted the rubber and then stacked to the panel. Other experimentation, designing and working you, with the materials, getting inspired from the material behavior and taking it further into a architectural form and architectural model. I had four published plugins on Grasshopper for data extraction for publication and a published paper in Cadria 2020 uh, about generating and uh, extracting uh, data for fabrication using these plugins. And now we had the wood MDF panels sheets and we have the CNC in the, the school and we learn how to design, we teach the students how to design, how to experiment with the materials. And then I take my, my, my lead, my position <laughs> into my passion onto doing the assembly together and getting excited you know it's it's not it's not a job as i mentioned if you would like one day to work into the digital fabrication it is not a job it is not a construction a conventional way of construction it is a living experience you can see me here like sleeping i'm sleeping because we spend a whole day for three connected days or two connected days uh, uh, just working on the assembly process and this is what one of my colleagues and this is one of my colleagues and the others are our students. Moving forward for the next slide, this is my beloved professor. This is the one who, you know, you, you need to believe in yourself. And it is this, this is for the professors now, not for the students. You know, it is very helpful when your professor, when you see in your professor's eyes, that they believe in you when you when you believe in yourself and you see in your professors that they are believing in you you can do a very great work you know this is done in 2016 this is done five years ago and it is two meters and a half and bear two meters and a half bear two meters and a half and this is again my student it is designed of rhino and uh, SP lines and then Grasshopper is used for data extraction. You can see here the panels, the wooden panels, and the wooden pieces arranged into these wooden panels, and it is tagging, automatic tagging, and so on. Everything is studied digitally before going for, for the machinery uh, and fabrication and construction as well. And going deeper and deeper into the past, this wooden seat designed using Rhino and TSP line is used here for this weaving pattern, okay? And TSP line as well. I remember TSP line is used in most of this curvature, but it is TSP line, we can say that TSP line nowadays is a sub D, so it's totally a Rhino doing. This is a Rhino doing, and then Grasshopper is used for that extraction. Using Grasshopper automatically, you can automate and generate these cuts, these wooden cuts, and you can give them numbers, tagging. So you can take it easily 
and look for the number and then go for its actual location and put it on site and then go for the second piece and put it on site and so on. And this was very helpful to study every step, to study everything on Rhino. And yes, now we are answering again one of our friend's question at the beginning hours ago when he asked, can we do a BIM, a, a BOQ a Rhino? Yes, we can using Grasur. Actually, we have to do because we have to calculate how much money we need. So we can optimize the design. We can optimize how much materials. This was designed to be a continuous wooden structure like dense like this piece but then when we calculated the wood uh, area square it was you know so expensive and then we optimized we increased the density where the students will sit down and minimize the density in the other pieces so so it, it can be applicable you know you can do it because you optimize based on your financial situation or the project financial situation. This one is made using other plugin from the plugins I developed uh, before. Uh, unfortunately, it is not available on Food for Rhino. It is just for commercial use. But yeah, it is there and everyone can do it. You know, it's, it's, not, it's, it's not impossible. You can do it by yourself. This is a double curved acrylic surface and now yes again we I, I went for a shop and bought some of the acrylic sheets and using an electric oven in the lab I, I cut these uh, acrylic sheets into pieces that can uh, be used into an oven electric oven uh, to make it elastic and then used a machine vacuum forming machine to push and to vacuum these tiles using Rhino and Grasshopper, this surface, big surface, it is divided into small units, and then each unit will be uh, will will get the x, uh, let's say x z z height for each point, and then we use the machine to push this further. We had a vacuum forming machine, and this blue sheet is a silicon sheet which connects all of these metal rods together and then they are changed into the Z direction based on the material, based on the panel deformation and then the acrylic sheet is, is put on, on it and then uh, a leather, um, industrial leather and then vacuumed so you will have a deformed acrylic sheet. But at this project the problem was um, we couldn't make the edges like similar so we can collect them together it was just an experimentation experimenting the material and look how we can learn and teach and get inspired through the material to take it further into a pavilion and after that other the, this is the last blogging i developed it is for constructing a double curved metallic surface and we had uh, a mocha based on this in real life um, uh, assembled by Fahmi uh, and shared on Instagram, Facebook and so on. I can share it later with you all. It is the same surface but in real life for a mock-up. It will be like fabricated into metal material later on in a few weeks. Firstly we designed the surface and then using Grasshopper in the plugin you will have these tiles and with the tagging, with the positions for the structure and so on. And this will be folded and then after folding they will be fixed together to have a double curved metallic surface. And this is a 3D tagging where you can look in the 3D model on Rhino and then go for real life and take the piece number 44 and piece number 43 and then do folding, bring them together and do stitching using metal rods or whatever for fixation and move for the other tile and so on so you have your final project. 
this was a uh, 3D clay printing. We had a CNC, so I developed an, a head extruder head attached to the CNC. And this is uh, one I, I'm talking about. It is a very basic one, but yes, it's working. And we had a 3D clay experimentation. And this is other experimentation. We were developing an adjustable mold to use further, and it is still under development. This uh, opera project. But now it is not about the design, it is more about the fabrication. Into the concert hall, you will see a double curved surface like you can see now. This is the surface, not a surface, no, the surface in the concert hall. I had this project um, for fabrication for a month, but then unfortunately they asked a Spanish contractor to move on because, you know, it's, it's a very huge project. This is designed using Rhino and TSV lines, and the structure is totally generated on Grasshopper. And then the, the linear building beneath is designed and made on Revit. So this wide building, linear building, is made on Revit, and the shell is made on Rhino and Grasshopper. This is the linear, the cubicles, who made it on Revit and the floating structure made on Rhino and Grasshopper. And if you look further into the structure, you will see these ribs totally on the normal, totally perpendicular on the surface. So we tested its applicability. This design uh, is made using 3D Max, uh, 3D Max and some Photoshops, yeah. This is a grand opera house in uh, in the new capital. Yeah, I can see it's a French classic. Maybe some of you are asking themselves now, what, why after all of these presentations I had and I done and I designed a building like this one as a classical architecture? It is not my choice, unfortunately. It is a client choice. So at, at this point, I, I had done seven proposals and presented seven proposals, but they preferred and asked for a classical, French classic proposal because opera is a French uh, art. This is why. And this is a project and some uh, photos and images from on site and the GRB materials and GRC materials used on site for, for the for the facade doing and cladding and so on. Other projects done on uh, 3D Max and render 3D Max and so on. And this one, this one, this project actually, um, I joined ECG Engineering Consultant Group as a junior architect on 2016. And I joined at this time because of this project. They designed a, a, a building facade, a very long building facade on 3ds Max. And then the client accepted the project and asked them to generate data for fabrication, but they couldn't. Because if you design on 3D Max, you can't import into Rhine. Why I can't import into Rhine? I tell you. Uh, sorry, they couldn't import into Revit. The point is, if we are using 3D Max, 3D Max, SketchUp, Revit, or whatever is a mesh-based software, you, you will have vertices, you will have edges, you will have faces and banners. And if you are working on Rhino, it is totally based on an equation, and the object is a representation of that equation. So working with Rhino will give you the capability of just you know, this is based on Max, SketchUp, Revit, and so on. Yeah. It's it's not um, it's not helpful at all. But working with Rhino, it's just a curve, and that curve is represented in an equation. So they had done and designed the design on three Max. So if, when they sent the design into Revit, they couldn't select a facade. They had millions of pieces, millions of tiles. So they couldn't take the design further into construction. Then they hired me to, to redesign and reconstruct everything back again into Rhino. 
So they can take this furthermore into Revit and do the BIM task. And this was the final design after this uh, co compatibility work and re-implementing the tools and so on. This is other project totally made uh, using uh, 3D Max, 3D Max and so on. I move just faster into the design that is made using 3D Max. There is nothing innovative. You know, it's just very normal contemporary architectures. This one is done using Rhino, yes. And it is very easy to design and very easy to construct. It is like uh, pipes. Um, these pipes, each, each element can be like made uh, um, and then collected together. Um, and it can it can be done like mechanically or manually. It's it's very applicable in both techniques. And other this is done using 3D Max as well. It's taking a lot of time of effort to do a lot of details. But yes, if you are if this this can be done using Rhino and Grasshopper for uh, the facade. But yeah, but this one was done using 3D Max. It is more into 3D Max and so on. In this specific project, this is a residential building. Here I would like to share a point. This is a French scanned statues and ordinance and so on. Where I got this, I went for Sketchfab. There is a website called sketchfab.com. On Sketchfab, you, will, you, you can just go for a French uh french uh, ornament or for, for french architecture or whatever and then you will have like a 3d scanned objects and constructed uh, architectures and so on some of them you have to pay for and others are totally for free where you can download and then use them in your designs and so on this one is is a 3d scanned statue so it is a point cloud based and it is extremely detailed it is loading now and when it finishes it will be very fascinating um, you can check it later i i'll share the link for sketchfab um, into the chat so later on if you'd like to check this you can go for yeah sketchfab you can check sketchfab later on okay yeah, this is a it's quality. You know, it's a 3D scan, 3D scan, and you can use it and download it as OBG, MTL, and so on, and use it in your design. <clears throat> you uh, there is a lot of ornament where you can get. Okay, and then moving forward. Yeah, this facade developed using Grasshopper, Grasshopper for uh, uh, generating a very random. Uh, uh, um, facade, very random elements arranged together and uh, randomly reduced. Um, this is just 3D Max, just 3D Max. This one sheet panel designed the Rhino and then imported into Revit for the whole project. This is a stadium, so mainly it is developed into uh, Revit. By the panel itself is done a Rhino aggregated all along the rail on Rhino and then import it into Revit to move forward into BIM studies and so on. This is just 3D Max. Why I'm mentioning the 3D Max as well, because you will be working in the current uh, market and some of the offices, no, most of the offices are using 3D Max and others using Rhino and others using Revit and so on. You should have a knowledge and know-how in most of these uh, tools and components plugins and so on it is more the tools and the software is the language how the artists are talking and so on. this was one of my proposals for the grand opera house and this was designed rhino the surfaces was designed rhino and the structures is automatically generated on grasshopper 
All of these structures are automatically generated on grasshoppers, but the surfaces are designed in Rhino, and these wooden panels are designed uh, on grasshopper, and the lines, the floating lines, are designed on Rhino. And now we finished discussing our my portfolio, uh, and before moving forward, do we have any questions? Do we have any questions? Yes, please, students, if you have any question, please ask us. Okay. Let's. Do we have any questions? I can move any forward. questions? Please. Hello? Yeah. Hello? Hello, can yes. you hear my voice? Yes. Actually, Azam, yeah. your last uh, PPT presentation is showing your interior of a world. Uh, one of, uh, what is that shown before sheet? Yes. Yeah, this one. Yeah. Can you explain me the what is the concept and then how you can be developing this uh, auditorium? Um. Yeah. For for an upper house, um, mainly they consider the voice aspect of the of the what is happening here of, of the symphony or whatever is being played. So the point was, I, I tried to take this voice aspect into consideration while designing the panels. And then I had a kind of attractors within the lines and the voices around the whole. And these factors are implemented into generating the panels. So, uh, but it is just a conceptual. This needs more and further uh, sound analysis to, to make it real, but they didn't move forward with the proposal and they preferred the classical one unfortunately <laughs> do we have any other questions my friends or should i or anyone can partic participate students anyone can ask a question for mr Azar. if anyone had a question or i can move forward want to develop uh, your music, uh, good evening. yeah I, good evening I sir see. Uh, my name is Kishore Kumar. Uh, I'm Austin professor. I just want to know: uh, Do you follow any algorithms while before uh, creating these kinds of concepts? Do you follow any algorithms uh, or any fractal theory uh, behind this? Um, thanks for your question. It's um, very interesting and tricky. <laughs> um, Actually, um, I, I, I used to start like experimenting uh, on a maquette. I used to start with plasticine. It is, you know, it's a playable material you can play with and think uh, using this material for design uh, and learn from its physical characteristics and so on um, and think with. And then I got inspired and then I start implementing into Rhino and testing. And for the grasshopper, grasshopper is mainly about uh, logic, logic, and and the, this logic um, is translated somehow into an algorithm, and the algorithm generates these forms. So uh, the algorithm is based uh, on the idea, and is based on the parameters. So if you had a, a hole like this one or a surface like this wooden surface and would like to do it uh, on grasshopper, firstly, you would like to start looking for parameters. What parameters do I have? I had, uh, um, I can generate uh, tiles and these tiles can have a parameter into scale, have a parameter for depth, uh, have, has a parameter for extrusions, have a parameter of its aggregation and flowing, have a parameter with sound factor and so on. All these parameters transferred into logic, working together as an algorithm into Grasshopper, and all of this process just generates the service. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mostly welcome. Do we have any other questions, my friends? Any other questions, students and professors? Hello, anyone? Okay, no one can enter. Okay, yeah, so we can move forward. Yeah, yes, yes. So we yes. Can... 
Uh, or do you prefer um, a, a few minutes to speak? Yeah. Of coffee break? Or for what? No, I just only had lunch, so no need for coffee break. No, no, no you okay. can take. Can move for, yeah, yes, I can move for. Yeah. Okay. Uh, hello, as. Uh, yes. Uh, Fahim is there? Fahim? Yeah, Fahim is there, yes. Can you join it with us? He want to talk with us something over here. Yeah, he, he is there. Don't worry about family. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Moving forward, in the next okay. presentation. Okay. Yeah. Just go 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 back uh, your uh, coffee break and then come. Good. What, what uh, no, no, no. I'm fine. No, no. I'm I'm not tired yet. You know, <laughs> it's fine. And I would so, just ask him for, for you, not, not for me. Uh, <laughs> because, you know, after lunch, maybe you need to take off your tea. Like this. this is why I was asking the professor. But if, if he prefer we continue, I'm totally fine. No, please, I have please, my please, coffee. Please continue, sir. Please, please. Continue. continue. Yeah. Okay. So, um, for this one, um, it is a project by Zah Hadid. And it is under construction. It was already constructed in KSA, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, but there is a fire there, so it is back again into under construction. Uh, usually, these kind of structures and forms and very beautiful designs, they use a plastic-based material into the facade, because plastic-based material is very light material and easily to uh, manipulate and deform and so on. And these plastic based materials uh, just went on fire, and the whole building became on fire, and the whole structure just fell down. But not, not all the structure, but the whole cladding system just became on fire and so on. So it's again under construction. The, the building structure is a uh, steel structure based, and you can see the very organic form designed and developed using these pipes and this design optimized this this keywords we had to mention this kind of keywords it is optimized it is designed and it, it considers the final surfaces if you look here you will see a very large opening and here a very small opening and so on and this is based on the fixation of the exterior cladding material so they consider the, the facade they consider the design and they consider the structure stability and so on and then they started the material fixation and, uh, and they moved forward the fire didn't catch these glasses but the fire catches oh i'm sorry the fire catches the plastic cladding the outer cladding from other uh, uh, side and then it went over the building um, and let's move for other project other project it's um, in North Park a North Park railway station again by Zahadid Zahadid this is if we look for it is you know it is uh, optimized for the topography for the ISO curves and then this ISO curve is used for cutting the surfaces and taking the panels and generating the structures. So they had these kind of structures, frames, contours. We can say contours as these structures are uh, in the same direction, but actually it's in both directions. It's like a waffle structure, but it's but it more advanced in one of these directions. And then the panels came together, assembled, and it is totally generated with coordinates and tagging and so on. And other project it's Hyder Elviv Center by Zahadi and the panels and so on and I remember this building also went on fire because of the plastic materials they used in the elevations and facades so if you are going to design something in the future and think of your design you should think of um, its financial cost so you should not choose a plastic material not fire rated you should choose a material fire rated experimented and it will live longer 
And then, yes, uh, also Zaha Hadid's uh, mall uh, in Beirut, it went on fire too. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> yeah, her mall in Beirut went on fire too, yeah. Because they used to have a plastic materials. Um, uh, it is very light material, so the structure can be very light, but actually when it became on fire, the whole building became on fire, so the structure became unstable, and you may pay double the cost of the building to renovate everything, and you will still on risk. You may cut on fire again, and everything <laughs> will <laughs> fail. So we can have this double curved truss on Grasshopper using, there is a plugin called Launchbox, which generates this truss, double curved truss, and then we can have launch books with current for optimizing the structures and the radius of the pipes. So you can have a double curved working structure. And then uh, the panels implemented on the external layer. So looking at the building, it is, yes, it's a living creature. It's a living organism. Where you can see a lot of systems, structural, uh, electrical, mechanical, architectural, and so on. The building is something very big, very huge. We, we have to look forward and study every aspect. Um, and thanks for Fahmi for putting a lot of hard work on preparing this presentation. Um, okay, this is about the building, the construction process, how the construction process is done, the foundation, and so on. And, you know, they are moving the cement, preparing everything um, for the construction process, as we are seeing now, um, timeline for the construction, the formwork, um, the basic formwork for the initial momentum. Usually in the Hadid buildings, they had a very huge concrete structure inside, very huge concrete core. This is what we are seeing now. And then this concrete core, uh, uh, they start doing and building and assembling the steel structure around this concrete core. This concrete core, we can say it's a shear wall. It's a giant shear wall. And then the steel structures, uh, they started implementing, connecting, uh, assembly, and so on, for everything just around the shear wall, around the giant concrete structure, so we can have the building stable. Um, if we moved forward, yeah, we can see more into the timeline, into the construction process, and what is happening, uh, the cladding, you can see the cranes and uh, some some of the panels are collected together outside and then will attach and some others are just being assembled on site on the giant metal mesh that is uh, uh, fixed on the concrete uh, core. And yes, and so on. Yeah, very interesting experience and it takes maybe a lot of time and effort but uh, very interesting outcomes and now they are fixing the panel and how the panel are being assembled together and can you imagine building a giant structure like this and looking for Sydney Opera House I remember a uh, few years ago I was studying Sydney Opera House and studying these shells firstly the architect designs a shell organic shells but for construction it take around 20 years just the civil engineer was looking for the structural system that can hold this big shell so and finally he decided he can take a cut from a bowl and this bowl you know at night he was like peeling off an orange and while, while cutting this orange he got inspired by its performance it's a bowl and he cut a piece from it it is very strong structure and then this piece is a cut of a pole and then this mirror together to have the shell and so on why i'm mentioning this one this one take 
a lot of years for construction, more than 20 years for design and construction. And uh, the big one done by Zahadi took nothing compared to what happened in Sydney because of digital fabrications and advanced techniques they are using. Going to China, traveling to China for Mad Opera House, very advanced structures and very advanced truss, double curved truss structure with the ball connections and so on. And using Grasshopper, you can generate such a structure, such a double curved truss structure, and you can see the, con the ball connections and so on. And this uh, a type of panels, we can say it's a mocha panel and we can say it's a part of the project and then these will be assembled with the other parts and so on. But I prefer it's just a mock-up studying the material, the behavior, the performance, the weight and so on, applicability, compatibility and so on. And then taking it further into this giant truss structure. Okay. Today is a Hadid day. <laughs> Um, BIM tools, implementing, looking, taking forward the design into reality and how this can be in a real-time project one day and how it is done already. Um, mixing a lot of structural types, components, and the structural is mainly inspired by the architectural form and the architectural form is totally depending on the structural capabilities and the structural uh, characteristics and so on. Uh, so uh, the architectural designer or the architectural engineer and the civil engineer should be working together, not against each other. They should collaborate and cooperate, not uh, work against each other. Let's look for the video. It's a very short video, but yeah, it's very helpful timeline for construction and how the truss is fixed, assembled on site, giant structure, giant steel structure, and then the material being assembled together. And yes, still you have a massive concrete structure inside, the shear wall, the anchor point for the building, and then the steel structures come all around, as we can see here, yeah. Okay, I'm moving forward again and again. The Hadid. The materials, the panels, how, how, how they are implementing cement and concrete structures in a, ve in a very advanced way, in using a very advanced formwork, how we can take the formwork into an advanced level using the, the advanced computationally parametric algorithmic, however, what keyword you can use, but it's the future of construction and tools and technologies and so on. Very advanced structure, double curved, very complicated design of Rhino and Grasshopper for that extraction for fabrication, and then implemented into a BIM software developed using uh, this software, uh, take more forward, further uh, with details uh, with uh, mechanical, electrical, uh, structural systems, considering the architectural outcome and aspect. So you can see these very interesting and amazing lines, and in real time, you will find it as well. Going back to nature, going back to reality, going back to environment, answering the question asked by our friend how we can design a, a bio using a biomaterial and environmental uh, friendly architecture and so on wasp are designing and building using the clay this is a very giant clay printer and they are using some straws and so on from the nature to fill in the gaps into the clay they make this kind of zigzag filled with uh, very natural straw material and th this material is for uh, heat insulation uh, and so on and sound insulation and the material just totally clay and we can look for the video now very fast track very very timeline they are um, is, is the clay printing is just mixing the clay with some mixing clay with some water um, and some straws with a mixture, as we can see. And now with a bump, it pushed 
to the extruder to be added into layers and when they put a layer they wait until it dry and then they put other layer wait until dry and so on and you can use some mixtures to make it dry fast and then you can move forward more faster and faster and there is some designs in MIT as well on the same concept and idea in digital futures uh, YouTube channel you can find one you can go for uh, I don't remember its name but one of our uh, presentations we had a student from MIT he was using the same technique if you remember using bricks for a parametric facade adaptive facade and how the robots are implementing and putting assembling together everything to have a very futuristic world the robot hold this brick maybe he is holding using a vacuum technique or it is grabber there is two options the first one is to grab grabber is something that catch the brick and moves and the other one is by vacuum vacuuming it is just suck air and then the object stuck to the vacuum and then when you push air again it is free from the vacuum and so on video implementation of what is doing and happening okay. we can move forward yeah what can be done what can what designs we can have using this form it is based on algorithm designed on grasshopper uh, simulated on grasshopper and then fabricated using the robot and these brick tiles and so on yeah and now the assembly is happening they are just just the robot is doing everything he is he is capable of reading the file reading the uh, process and then he uses this camera if we can see the camera upside it is for recognition each tile from these tiles are tagged and then he's doing a recognition within the camera and if it is okay he's putting them together to have the final outcome and final project you know yeah and there's some gluing and so on so you have a final glued uh, object together very very interesting experimentation uh, at the final he will do some kind of uh, what what if we just tilted it to the side it will fail or not and then uh, yeah it fails <laughs> but the problem is about the glue and so on yeah we discussed this very very long time in, in the previous discussion in the previous panel and we now have a good understanding of the pretension structures the pretension structures is a, is a structural way of designing architectures yeah and now um, i finished this presentation and i'm willing to take the questions if there is a question and uh, if not we can uh, stop and take a coffee break and then come back for a technical tutorial very fast technical tutorial do we have any questions yeah hi sir i'm chandani yeah welcome how much sustainable and passive are these uh, buildings? Uh, the buildings you showed, like the Zaha Hadid buildings. And... <laughs> this is a very tricky question, you know? You should know. <laughs> uh, well, maybe Zaha Hadid was designing something for the future, and maybe the sustainability from her perspective wasn't the environmental sustainability aspect. Maybe she was looking for a sustainable business or maybe a sustainable uh, humanity perspective of the architecture. Or maybe she was looking for how people preserve and interact with the architectures and a sustainable, interactive, uh, living architecture, not a dead architecture, you know. All around the world, we can see buildings uh, designed by, by a very famous architects, but they are um, demolished because no one no longer using them but she what what she designed um is, is is an art piece so the community it 
I believe what she had done, she manipulated the community perception of what the architecture can be. And this is the most sustainable uh, uh, way of encouraging the community to believe in the architect, you know? In our communities, we are missing the rule of the architect. I can give my word from my community here in Egypt. A lot of uh, customers just go direct to the uh, contractor asking him, can you please build my villa? Can you please just build me an apartment? And the contractor had this kind of a cliche villa. He, he, he had done this, the same type of villa in a lot of places. And this is not a sustainable way for the architectural profession, but what she is doing, she is, she is, you know, she is doing, and she is making the sustain the architecture profession sustainable. This is from my point of view. It is not an environmental sustainability, but it is an architectural professional sustainability to to give us space and to push the limits. The public community see about the profession and what can be done designed constructed and so on i hope i could answer it. yeah <laughs> any any other tricky questions <laughs> any more questions hello sir yeah this is me Bala again Bala. So, yeah Sir, uh, I have a question on the digital fabrication, mm -hmm. um, particularly this uh, hydraulic center, cultural center by Zahadit. Okay. So I can see the skeleton structure, uh, the space frame structure. So when it comes to uh, roofing, the paneling thing, so how do they make how do they make those uh, paneling things? Like, uh, do they make uh, separate the uh, 2D molds or uh, do they do uh, CNC cuttings? Um, thanks for your interesting question. Um, from my, you know, I'm just guessing. I have to mention this for uh, scientific purposes and clearance, you know. <laughs> I wasn't involved in the project, but what I think, um, it came on fire. And this means it is a plastic based. And if it is a plastic based, so they made uh, like a plastic composite on a four mark. So I believe they developed uh, the, the, a plastic component on a four mark for the building. Let's let's go for the process. I have the design. I had the surface designed with rhino, and then I can generate like a UV mapped uh, grid on the surface and cut the surface into pieces, applicable pieces that the contractor can manipulate and, and do and so on. And each piece, I had a formwork, they may develop like a wooden formwork. And then these plastic sheets uh, um, are, are being adapted to the formwork. If you remember my uh, proposal for the double curved acrylic sheets, this is how I manipulated acrylic sheets to a formwork. They may manipulate a plastic materials and panels to a formwork, and then these plastic panels assemble together. This this may be the way they develop the building, but this was not right because finally it went on fire. Yeah, but if 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 I'm if I'm going to do it nowadays, um, uh, I will be confused actually. If I had this project in my office, uh, I will be so confused because you will be selecting between two choices a first choice is to make it like a plastic composite material very light material so your your structural system will be very simple structure it is double curved yes but still simple structure because that dead load is very light but the problem it may cut on fire there is some uh, uh, upgrades that can be done on these plastic panels to so take it forward and it be fire resistant. You can search for fire resistancy materials and so on. Uh, and the other option is to make it uh, cement based. So it be GRC, let's say. But if it is GRC, it will be very heavy. 
So the structural, the steel structure system will be so complicated and very large. And this will be not helpful in terms of fi financial aspects and so on. This is what I guess, what I think, and what I recommend. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, uh, I can see like uh, most of the buildings by Zahad was constructed under uh, GFRP, which is comes and yeah. is coming under yeah. plastic. plastic base. Yes, plastic yeah. base. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, but totally this building, I think uh, I guess uh, this was done using GFRC and GFRP. I think so. Hmm. So that's why uh, it's causing some uh, accidents, like fire accidents. Fire. I think. Yeah. Fire. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we had a project in the new capital here in Egypt. Uh, you know, while construction on site, it, it is the new parliament, and they were just fixing the GRB panels on the facade. And then, the you know, the worker just welding something beside this facade. And then, you know, while he welding, there is some fires just pushed out. And this mm -hmm. fire just, just, you know, when it touched the GRB, it went on fire and the whole building went on fire and that was a terrible accident happened here in Egypt. So the plastic materials isn't helpful, you know, it's very, very tricky. This is why, if you remember, when I started my presentation, I, I you know, I, I got inspired in my whole life from the Hadith. But when I started my presentation, I started with Wolf D. Brex because he is using metal materials, material based panels. So it never caught on fire, <laughs> and, it so is, that yeah. <laughs> and it is very durable. If you make it like from steel material, metal-based panels, it is very durable. It will live forever, and it will never caught on fire. So it's totally safe. It may be very expensive in the initial cost, but on the long run, it is very cheap because you know the maintenance is very easy. It will never caught on fire, it will never fail, and so on. But a plastic material, it is not durable, will caught on fire easily, you know, and it's not durable, and so on. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, welcome. Any other questions? Any more questions? We have 73 members. So we should have some, yeah, <laughs> 74 now. <laughs> if, if we have some questions, it's fine. If not, we can go for a coffee break, but I'll wait a few minutes more to get some questions. If there is, just believe in yourself and in the importance of your question in, into, into your contribution, you know. Asking a question is a contribution. Asking a question and expressing your point of view is very important for yourself, for your understanding, uh, of your for your learning process, and for me as well. <laughs> I think you can uh, go for a small break, and uh, yeah. so yeah. ten. Uh, how many minutes is it? Ten minutes or fifteen minutes break you wanted? Yeah. Um, uh, yes, T 10 minutes to 15 minutes. 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Okay, we'll be back. Uh, it's now 2.50. Uh, by 3.05, we'll catch you back, sir. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay. yeah. We'll be back after 15 minutes. Please wait. Okay. Thank you so much. 